Welcome to video 12, recording transactions using a computer versus doing it manually. So far in all of these lessons, you've learned how to record transactions in a database. Uh, uh, you could easily use a computer program like Excel. For example, when the individual investor put cash of 40,000 into the business, we added 40,000 to cash and we added 4,000 to equity. And of course, we made sure that the changes on the left in the assets always equals changes on the right in the liabilities plus equity. So if you were using a database to make sure you balanced, you could simply add a, 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 a formula over here to add all changes in your assets, subtract all changes in liabilities and equity, and that check would be zero always because you could write a formula to make sure you're never out of balance. So if you look here, if you take all changes in the left of 40,000 minus all changes in the right of 40,000, your computer would generate a zero there. I call that the Pacioli check because the father of double entry accounting is Luca Pacioli. And he devised this manual system where the left always needs to equal the right. Of course, when we borrowed 210,000 from the bank, we added 210,000 to cash, we added 210,000 to liabilities, and if you added all changes in assets, subtracted all changes in liabilities and equity, you would again get zero. The third entry, we bought a building, recall, for 180,000, where cash went down and building went up. Here, all changes in the assets were zero, all changes in liabilities and equity were zero, and we would come out with zero there. Now, let's say the bookkeeper was in a hurry and actually accidentally made this number, say, 1,800, or let's say the bookkeeper made that 18,000. Our check here, if we wrote it properly with Excel, would show that we're going to be $162,000 off. So any error will always come out in the validity check column. And so um, this notion of left equal right is crucial. All changes in the asset side has to always equal the changes in the liability and equity side. A further advantage of using the approach I've shown you in this class is that all changes in cash can be immediately sorted into three categories. Financing, financing, and in this case, investing. Now, in today's world, the computer, uh, computer systems are written to make sure that all transactions will balance. But now, very crucially, almost all textbooks in this world of ours are written as though we still live in 1494. And the manual system of recording transactions is, uh, uh, uses a different mechanism called uh, what I call a two-column approach. And let me, see, let me show you how that differs from what we just did. Now, to do this, uh, recall that assets are always on the left-hand side of the equation. Liabilities and equity are on the right. And using a manual system back in 1494 all the way till about 2012, um, uh, people would make journal entries as follows. If an asset went up, let's draw a T for an account like cash. The rule is if assets go up, we're going to record the number in the left hand side. So I'm just going to write INCR for that. Since assets are on the left, we're going to record increases on the left. Since liabilities and equity are on the right-hand side of the equation, let's draw a T for notes payable and a T for equity. Since the natural home for liabilities and equity are on the right, like a bird migrating to its favorite part of the nest in a tree, liabilities and equity prefer to put increases on the right while the asset species of the bird likes to put its increases on the left. Okay? Now, in our example that we used to record the owner putting in 40000 to start the business, 
since cash increased here, and since equity increased, the increase in cash of 40 would go on the left. Since equity went up 40,000 and it increased, it migrates in the right. So using a manual two column system, increases in assets go on the left, increases on liabilities on the right. And the check here to make sure everything balances, remember the check in our database approach was to simply make sure all changes in the left minus the changes in the right equals zero. Here, after each transaction we asked, does the left equal the right? And if it does, we know that we balance. Now, the second transaction, when we received $210,000 from the bank, cash went up and the note payable increased. And so here, cash went up, it's an asset, it went on the left. Notes payable is a liability, it migrated to the right. Does left equal right? Yes, it does. We balance. Now, the third transaction, we bought a building for $180,000. Now, a building is an asset. We're going to label it building. Did the building go up or down? Ah, you would think the building went up $180,000. That goes on the left. Did we pay cash? Let's look at our database plus minus approach. We subtracted cash for 180. So let's subtract 180 here. Whoops, wrong side, yep. Notice I put left and left. I don't balance. Cash is an asset, it went down. We'll put that on the right, the building on the left. If somebody said, how much is our new balance in cash? We can take all of our left hand entries of 250 and do a running tally. We can compare it to our right hand balance. And if somebody says, how much is in cash at the end of that transaction? We know we have $70,000. So coming back here, using our database approach, we know we have $70,000 because we're keeping track of it just like a checkbook. Here, it's a little more cumbersome because in the 1490s, we didn't have computer spreadsheets. So it was very important that the accountant first record the entry in a book of original entry called a journal. And then at the end of each day, the merchant would take all journal entries and post them to what we called a T-account ledger system. Now, the reason we had two columns back then is to ensure that the bookkeeping was accurate. Because without calculators and without computer spreadsheets, it was very easy for the accountant's merchant, or the merchant, for the, uh, rather, it was important for the merchant's accountant to get everything right before measuring profits and losses. So, let's get a little bit more practice here before we say goodbye to video 12. Let's take a new sheet here, and let's just practice. Pretend you're in a classroom and you have a student here facing the wall, and we'll call him Andy. And next to him, on the right-hand side of the projection screen, is Linda. And next to Linda is Emily. Now, the left hand and the right hand are important here. When 40,000 was contributed to the business to start, the business's cash went up 40,000. So we put it in Andy's left hand. Since equity increased and the natural home for equity is on the right, we put equity on the right hand side. So here, left cash equals right equity. Now, when we purchased another, uh, actually when we got a loan of 210,000, Andy's hand would go up on the left and the liability hand, here uh, Linda's hand would go up because her natural home is on the right hand side. Now when we bought a building, the cash for cash, Andy's cash went down and so we put the reduction in cash on the right hand side 
and we put the increase in the asset building on the left hand side. So here, right equal left. Um, on here, left equal right, left equal right, left equal right. We balance. Now, let's say we bought inventory for $10,000. If cash went down, cash would go on the right and the asset inventory would go on the left. If we sold inventory for cash of 30,000, cash would go up and equity would go up. The inventory would go away and we'd record the reduction in equity on the left. So, in conclusion, when an asset goes up, it goes on the left. When equity goes up, it goes on the right. When an asset goes up, it goes on the left. When a liability goes up, it goes on the right. When we spend money to buy a building and we use cash, cash goes down and building goes up. Right hand on the uh, cash, left hand building. When we buy inventory for cash, cash goes down, inventory goes up. When we sell inventory, inventory goes down, equity goes down. And when we get the cash for the sale, cash goes up and equity goes up. Now, this looks rather cartoonish in a way, but the manner in which I've taught you here, where when assets increase, and we put them on the left, the left-hand column is called the debit column. A decrease in an asset is called the credit column. Since the natural home for liabilities and equity is on the right, increases go on the right, decreases go on the left. And of course, remember, equity are Increases in equity on the right are called the credit side. Decreases are called the debit side. The only reason debits and credits are used right now is because of language persists over decades and centuries. But with the advent of computer technology and uh, where we can build in where an accountant never makes a human error, uh, the best way to keep track of assets, liabilities, and equity and their changes is by using a computer spreadsheet. So it would behoove students to learn that, uh, that if they want to get accounting transactions right, if they learned Excel, they would learn that all changes in cash for a period will be the basis for the statement of cash flows. All changes in equity earned will be the basis for our income statement. And all changes are all balances at the end of an accounting period. The bottom row here will be on our, what I would call the balance sheet. Let me bring that up a little bit. Now, I know I'm very messy because I usually do all of my writing now on a Word document or Excel, but it's cr crucial to understand that we can record all changes in assets, liabilities, and equity using a one column approach and building in a check to make sure that all changes in our assets when subtracted from our liabilities and equity will always be zero. Hence, debits and credits aren't really needed in a 21st century world. With that, I conclude video number 12 and I look forward to uh, making more of these in the future.